So let's kick off our second half by talking about extending and automating your enterprise. And while you're doing this, you're gonna be using the ArcGIS extending SDKs. This is the ArcGIS Enterprise SDK, and the ArcGIS Pro SDK, and the ArcObjects SDK. Let's talk a bit about ArcObjects. ArcObjects continues to be used widely by many of you. They're the building blocks of ArcMap, an ArcGIS server, and ArcGIS engine. And with the ArcGIS 10.8 release just a few weeks ago, uh, we updated support for Visual Studio 2019. This year, ArcObjects as a developer technology has been in use for 22 years, and it served us well. And it will continue to be supported for many years to come, and there's great examples on GitHub. But if you're doing new development work, we strongly encourage you to use our latest developer technologies for ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Pro, and to build standalone apps using ArcGIS Runtime. So let's talk a bit about Pro, which is a framework designed specifically to support customization using .NET. We've also updated to Visual Studio 2019 uh, with the Pro 2.5 release a few weeks ago. There's three extensibility patterns using the Pro SDK. The first one is add-ins. This is where you develop tools and create functionality, and you can put it under new menu buttons and customize the UI in, in pretty significant ways. The second pattern is using solution configurations. This is where you actually get the opportunity to do a deeper customization of Pro and um, really brand Pro or skin Pro. That black application is actually the ArcGIS Pro uh, for intelligence analyst application, and it uses a customization. It has a, a set of images that's a carousel that the user can actually swipe and select that starts up an ArcGIS Pro uh, project. Very, very uh, deep customization capabilities there. And the third is plug-in data sources. So this is a pattern that uh, you can get at data sources, uh, feature classes, and tables. Think of it as almost as a geodatabase API for Pro. And there's lots and lots of great samples uh, on GitHub for this. So let's take a look at the ArcGIS Pro SDK in action. And to do that, I'd like to introduce Wolf from the Pro SDK team. Wolf. Thank you, Jim. As you can see, my ArcGIS Pro add-in is already running. I'm using the StreamLayer API to capture transponder flight data from two tour helicopters that are flying over the beautiful island of Kauai. My add-in is using a stream data taken from Open Sky Network. So what we'll do, we'll first take a look at how everything is working, and then we'll step through some of the code. So first, on the left, I have a dock pane with all my controls. I'm subscribing to StreamLayer events in the Pro API to continuously receive the updated locations of the two helicopters. In the center pane, you see the bird's eye view showing the current heli helicopter positions. My add-in is automatically panning the map view to keep both of these helicopters in the view at all times. On the right side, you can see the cockpit view. My add-in continuously computes a camera position that puts us in the trailing helicopter's cockpit. So as you can see, we're looking at the lead helicopter in front of us. On the bottom, we have a custom elevation profile. This elevation profile is continuously being updated with uh, the elevation altitude above sea level readings from the lead helicopter. And you can see the change in altitude as we fly over the Dapali Coast State Park and our, our elevation is increasing. So finally, and we don't see this here, I'm storing all the captured flight data in my uh, flight tracking uh, feature class in my geodatabase. We'll see that a little bit later. So all this processing is performed asynchronously in the background, meaning that my UI is still fully responsive. And I can show this, for example, by altering the cockpit view. I have a cockpit up-down view control. I'm gonna use this to look up. 
And now we can see the lead helicopter again in front of us because it has more altitude. I can also look down. I can also use my left-right view to look to the right and then to the left out of my cockpit. So what you just saw is how you can utilize ArcGIS Pro's asynchronous uh, architecture with the Pro SDK. So very good example. So next, I'm going to stop the add-in by clicking unsubscribe. And then I click subscribe again to hit one of my predefined breakpoints in Visual Studio. And here we are. And now we can take a look at the code. So what you see here is our basic subscription loop. You can subscribe for events using either the stream layer or as in my case, I'm using the real-time feature class. Using the real-time feature class, I can call subscribe. I can subscribe to all incoming rows or only to a subset of the stream data set. Also note that I'm using threading tasks here. This means that my subscription loop is running as a Windows background task. Now, when I call subscribe, I retrieve a real-time row cursor. To get the rows and the records, I can use the real-time row cursor to call wait for rows async. Wait for rows async does a non-blocking call waiting for the incoming row events to arrive. Also note here the keyword await is being used, and I have a suffix called async in my method name. And this is a pro API standard that tells us we are dealing with an asynchronous non-blocking method. The cancel parameter is how I cancel waiting. So now when the rows arrive through the stream layer, my wait for rows async method returns back to my subscription loop. Now I can use move next to process each one of these rows. So let's take a look. For each row, I retrieve the current real-time feature. I get the row source. And the row source allows me to determine what kind of row I'm dealing with. Here, I can look at existing, deleted, or newly inserted new rows. I then use the real-time feature to get all attributes, including the shape. Using the location and the bearing, I can now pan my bird's eye view and my cockpit view. And finally, I update my elevation profile, and I write my flight tracking data into a flight tracking feature class in my geodatabase. Now, once I processed all rows to wait for any new events to occur, I call wait for rows async again. So this completes, completes my subscription loop. So now let's go back to the add-in. And here you can see the flight path by the lead helicopter that is comprised from the collected flight data points in my geodatabase. I collected these as the add-in was running. So I can zoom in to look at the distinct transponder data points. All right, so I've shown you how to asynchronously process uh, streamed live data using the Streamlayer API. Thank you, and back to you, Jim. Thanks, Wolf.